I am me. All right. Go ahead. Our lesson today, we got to go quickly because Pastor had a really short sermon this morning. So, his sermon's about Zacchaeus, a real short sermon, get it? This was a wee little man. He was a short little guy. Oh, he didn't tell that story. We're going to have to do that story from the Bible. But right now, we're going to talk about the walls of Jerusalem being rebuilt. Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem. It says the walls rebuilt. But what city, in what city were the walls rebuilt? In what city were the walls rebuilt? Oh, Paxton. That's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Come on. The walls of Jerusalem. Those of you who have been here, what happened to the walls of Jerusalem? What happened to the walls of Jerusalem? Jesus broke down. Jesus did not break them down. No, it wasn't Jesus. It was broken by. Indirectly, he used somebody. Who did he use? Who do you think? Joseph. No, it wasn't Joseph. No, it wasn't Joseph. No one. Got a, got a guess? Uh, I That's a no. I got the nation was called Babylon. Babylon. Remember? Babylon. 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 Now, why why did Babylon come in and break down the walls of Jerusalem? Oh, it was done by God. Why was it done by God? Because they were they were uh, they, they were sinning too much. They were sinning. They were disobeying. Instead of following the laws of God, they were serving idols. And so, God allowed Babylon because if we are disobedient, we might get away with it for a while, but we're not going to get away with it forever. And disobedience brings trouble. Disobedience is going to bring trouble in your life. What happens if you disobey the teacher? You get punished. You get punished, right? Yeah. Maybe you get detention. Yeah. You know what we used to You said die. Let's, let's take that and go throw it out, please. Mr. Bain. Now, when I was a kid, way back when we used to ride to school on our dinosaurs, we had barefoot uphill both ways oh, in the I get, snow. I get dinosaurs. That's I get the dinosaurs. Oh, because you're 50? Because I'm old? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. We had chalkboards. We didn't yeah. have marker boards. Oh, we didn't have anything sad. electronic. We had chalkboards. But here's what would happen if, if we did not obey the teacher, if we didn't listen to the teacher, I will not disobey. Oh, you uh, teacher. teacher. Now, how would you like to go have to write that 500 times? Yeah. You want to know something else when I was a kid? If you didn't have your homework done, you would come up in front of the class, the teacher would take a ruler and smack you on the backside. Today, yes, you're right. Today, that is illegal. When I was a kid, that was not illegal. And teachers did it a lot. You see, what happened is that God said, worship me. God said that I am the only God that you will worship. Israel said, we don't care. And so God allowed the nation of Babylon to come in. Not only did they break down the walls of Jerusalem, but they took a bunch of the people captive. They killed a bunch of people, and, Jer and Israel stopped being a nation. And the people were taken captive to the land of Babylon for 70 years. 70 years. In 70 years, everybody here will be old people. Oh, my grandpa's 70. I'd be 81. Now, fast forward. There's a man named Nehemiah. This is his name, Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah had some friends come visit him. These friends lived in Jerusalem. And they came to Babylon to visit him. And they reported what Jerusalem looked like. And it made him sad. Now, Nehemiah had a very important job. He was the king's cupbearer. Do you know what a cupbearer does? A what? Cupbearer. Um, um, oh, Nehemiah was the cupbearer. Since you guys cannot understand a Western New York accent, he was a cupbearer. He brings wine. He brings wine. Yes, he does. But what does he do before he gives the wine to the king, Xander? I think you need to listen to Kaylee. <laughs> Why would he taste the wine before he gives it to the king? Oh, oh. Kay, uh, Kaya. So the king doesn't get poisoned or killed. If the yeah. wine is poisoned, if somebody tries to kill the king and poisons the wine, the king's cupbearer tastes the wine first okay. before he oh, gives it God. to the king. And if what happens, Sander, if that wine is poisoned, what happens to the cupbearer? <laughs> so Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. It was his job to taste the wine before the king took it. If the wine was poisoned, Nehemiah was going to die. Otherwise, he would give the cup to the king. Now, after receiving this report from Jerusalem, he was very sad. Now, he had never been sad in the king's presence before. It was considered a bad thing to be sad in front of the king. Because that would make the king sad, and the king don't like to be sad. So, this day, Nehemiah was sad, and the king noticed it. He said, Nehemiah, you are sad today. You've never been sad before. And Nehemiah was afraid. Oh no, I'm sad in the presence of the king. He might kill me. But the king was very understanding. He said to Nehemiah, this is sadness of heart. Your heart is sad. What would you like me to do for you? Nehemiah, that's what Nehemiah had been praying for. What would you like me to do? Oh, king, my city that I'm from, Jerusalem, its walls are burned and broken down. And there's nobody to look after the people, to look after my people. King, would you send me there so that I might look after my people and build up the walls of my city? And he said, how long do you need? And he sent them. He sent Nehemiah and all the, for all the men that Nehemiah took. And he gave them enough money to do whatever he needed to do. And Nehemiah went to Jerusalem. And one night, he took his horse. Maybe it was a horse, maybe it was a donkey. Probably was a donkey. They didn't really have horses to ride. Oh, that was a dinosaur. That was a... No, it wasn't that long ago. Dang it. Dang. Wasn't that long ago. He didn't have a dinosaur to ride. So, they, that's right, you did not. That's right. I had a dinosaur to ride, they did not. <laughs> so he took his, he took his uh, probably a donkey, and he rode in the middle of the night, he got up and he rode around the city of Jerusalem to find out what was going on, how the walls looked, and it looked real bad. And so he got all the men from Jerusalem together and said, we need to build this up. We need to get this ready. We've got the money to do it. The king has allowed us to do it. And let's do it. And all the men said, yes, we want to do it. We want to help. And every one of them, you know, because the wall was a huge, it, it was a huge city. Now, if I said to every one of you, let's clean every wall in this room. That's a pretty, look around. This is a pretty big room, isn't it? That's a big job to try to clean the whole room up, right? But here, what you do, and we're going to soon, but what happens is, maybe Matthias says, I'm going to take this section. And Jaden says, I'm going to take this section. And uh, Xander says, I'm going to take this section. And Kaya says, I'm going to take this section. And Kaylee says, I'm going to take this section. And you split it up. 
And that's what the men did. They split it up. Every one of them says, we're going to take a section. And pretty soon, the walls started to get started to look better, started to get rebuilt. Now, there were men. Let's see, one was named Tobiah. I'm not going to make you remember these names. The other was named Sanballat. They lived in the area. They were not Jews. They were not Israelites. They didn't want to see Jerusalem rebuilt. And so they decided... Hey, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? We're rebuilding the wall. You're not supposed to do that. We're going to do it. Can we help? No. No, you don't live here. You have no, you, you're not Israelites. You have no part of this. You shouldn't be doing that. We're going to tell the king on you. And they started causing trouble. They started causing trouble. They, they said, Nehemiah, why don't you come meet with us? And we can, we can discuss how we're going to build this better. Nehemiah says, don't bother me, please. I'm trying to build this wall. Nehemiah, people are going to try to kill you. Nehemiah says, I don't care. Leave me alone. And when that didn't work, they started mocking him. Oh, look at that wall. Oh, that they think they're going to build that wall. Do they think they're going to finish that in a day? One says, you know, if a fox goes up and, and just brushes against the wall, it's going to knock it down. And they tried to do everything to discourage them. And Nehemiah and his men said, no, we're going to build the wall. And finally, the walls got built. And the men that tried to, tried to uh, uh, stop them, they got mad. They got mad because the walls were built. But you see, sometimes you want to do something good. You want to, do, you want to obey God. You want to live the way God wants you to. And there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be very happy that you're doing that. And they're going to encourage you. But there are going to be people that are not happy that you're trying to live for God. They're not happy that you're obeying God. And they're going to do everything in their power to try to discourage you. They're going to tell you false things. They're going to try to say, hey, come over here. Hey, take a look at this. Look what we're doing. Look what we're doing. Don't you want to come do it with us? No. I'm trying to obey God. Oh, you're not going to obey God. You can't do that. Look at all the things you've done in your past. You're a bad person. You can't obey God. You see, some people, they don't want you to be good. They don't want you to obey God. And they'll do everything in their power to stop you. Because they didn't have police. And they didn't have anybody to help. So what they did was they surrounded a city with a wall. And that kept, that kept the wild animals out. And that kept the robbers out. And they would close the gates. And whoever was inside the city was safe. But whoever was outside the city was not. That's why they had walls. That's why it was important for them to have a wall. So that there was some place safe for them to live. Here's what I want to tell you. Because their time is short. This is what I want to tell you. It is right to obey God. It is right to live the way God says to live. Some people are not going to like it, and they're going to try to pull you down. They're going to try to make you afraid. We're going to beat you up if you, if you go to church. If you go to church, nobody's going to like you. Don't listen to those people. The only person that you need to worry about is what God thinks about you. And if God is happy with you, that's all you need to know. That's all that's important. That we obey God and that we live our lives that makes God proud of us. And when we obey God, God is proud of us. 
Now, what, what happens when we live a life obedient to God? What happens when we die? We have eternal life in heaven. Would you like to go to heaven? Yes. I would. I want to go to heaven. Yes, we do need to go. Now, while I'm here, I enjoy teaching you guys. But the time's going to come. I'll get old. And it'll be, it'll be my time to go. And when I go, I want to go to heaven. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Obey God, and don't worry what other people say about you. Don't worry about what they say, because it's only what you do that matters. You see, Aria might not be happy with what you're doing. It doesn't matter. Paxton might not be happy with what you're doing if you're obeying God. Maybe Paxton doesn't want to obey God, and you're obeying God. And he won't like you because you're obeying God. Even your own family can do that. Now, I think Paxton's going to obey God. But Jason, what happens if you want to obey God and Jaden doesn't? Down to what? Obeying God or down to Jaden? Down to Jaden. <laughs> That's the right attitude. That's the right attitude. Look, I have a brother. My bro he's younger than me. He's five years younger than me. I was serving God, and he didn't like it because he didn't want to serve God. He didn't want to. He didn't want to have anything to do with me because I served God. It didn't matter. Even if it made my own brother mad, I was going to serve God. Guess what? Now my brother serves God, and I'm happy about that. So always do. The right thing. Always obey God. God will be pleased with you. Don't worry about what other people think about you. Because they're not living your life. Always obey God. Alright, we're going to stop there. There goes the, sh there goes the shut up alarm. Yes, I did say that because I said it to myself, so it's not bad. What I want is everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes and we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this lesson that Nehemiah gave to us. Lord, he didn't care what other people thought of him. He didn't care that other people tried to distract him from doing your work. Lord, in the same way, I ask that you would, that you would cause us to not care what other people say that we would obey you and that would be the only thing that we're concerned about. And may all of us grow up to serve you and to please you. In Jesus' name, amen.